Hello everyone, I'm Sister Mary Elizabeth from the Seeds of the Word community and I would like to welcome all of you that are joining us this Wednesday, July 15th in the 15th week of Ordinary Time to do Laxio Divina and to pray with sacred scripture. For the readings of today, we will be reading the prophet Isaiah chapter 10, then the Psalm, Psalm, 40, Psalm 94 and the Gospel of St. Matthew chapter 11 verses 25 to 27. So for the first reading of today in the liturgy, we will be reading Isaiah chapter 10, verses 5 to 7 and verses 13 to 16. And in the prophet Isaiah today, we will see this chastisement from the Lord that is telling the people that they are being chastised because they were unfaithful to the Lord. So let's read. Thus says the Lord, Ah, Assyria, the rod of my anger, the club in their hands is my fury. Against a godless nation I sent him, and against the people of my wrath I command him to take spoil and to seize plunder and to tread them down like the mire of the streets. But this is not what he intends, nor does he have this in mind, but it is in his heart to destroy and to cut off nations not a few. For the Lord says, The strength of my hand I have done it, and by my wisdom I have understanding. I have removed the boundaries of people, and have plundered their treasures. Like a bull, I have brought down those who sat in thrones. My hand has found, like a nest, the wealth of the peoples. And as one gathers eggs that have been forsaken, I have gathered all the earth, and there was none that moved a wing, or opened its mouth, or chirped. Shall the axe vaunt itself over the one who wields it, or the saw magnify itself against the one who handles it, as if a rod should raise the one who lifts it up, or as if a staff should lift the one who is not wood? Therefore the Sovereign, the Lord of hosts, will send wasting sickness among his stone warriors, and under his glory a burning will be kindled like the burning of fire. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So in the context here, the people of Israel and the kings of Israel are being unfaithful to the Lord. And the Lord sends his chastisement to the people of Israel. So it is often in the Bible, in sacred scripture, to credit or to blame God for natural disasters, victories, or defeats in war. It's just like nothing can happen without God's permission and God's knowledge. But how, however, the Lord does not will or intends evil. The Lord does not will evil especially those that inflict suffering upon others rather the lord rather he allows for the exercise of people's freedom and its subsequent consequences and that sentence comes from the catechism of the catholic church number 304 304 so the lord does not will evil he does not will evil deeds so the Lord does not send evil to us. Evil is, is a consequence of our freedom. And that's something that we need to understand. Lord, The Lord allows the exercise of our freedom. And with our freedom comes the consequences of it. For the people of Israel, they were free to run the country they were free to run the kingdom but the lord as we see he was always there trying to help and say trust in me ask ask me how to run the country how to do right things and i will be with you trusting me as we say isaiah the prophet of faith of trust so the lord is always asking the kings and the people to trust him and in our lives is the same. The Lord's always asking us to trust Him, to put our life in His hand, then He will guide us. 
but we are free to follow God's law, to follow God's words, and to do to do His will and to be led by His Holy Spirit, or to do our own things. We are free, and in the exercise of our freedom, we also need to accept the consequences of it. For the people of Israel, the disasters that they were living, the 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 spirit of fear that they were living in is the consequence of their sins. It's not because the Lord wants to chastise them. It's not because the Lord wants to make them suffer. The Lord doesn't want this. God does not know evil and He does not want evil in our lives. And we need to, to know that. We need to be sure of that. Everything that happens to us that is bad does not come from God. He does not intend evil in our lives. And things that goes wrong is just because our free will, our freedom, we do things and we need to accept consequences. And that's what we can learn in this reading today. How do I accept the consequences of my deeds? I have freedom and the exercise of my freedom consequences will come how do I act with the consequences do I blame God for everything that happens to me or I have this conscience that I chose to follow this path I chose to do this way and that's why I'm living like this that's why my life my life is towards that more this than that and we can ask ourselves today do we blame God for all the things that happens the disasters in many countries sickness in our lives in our families do I blame God or I can see in it the consequence of my freedom and then in the consequence of my freedom again God is there and he is there if we want, if we welcome him to, and he will help us to go through this, whatever is happening, and he will always give us his grace. And we can see in, chap in the Psalm 94, verse 14, that says, For the Lord will not forsake his people, he will not abandon his heritage. For justice will return to the righteous, and all the upright in, ha in heart will follow it. Doesn't matter if you are living a time in your life that seems that you are being chastised by the Lord. You are not being chastised by the Lord. It is a consequence of your freedom, of your actions. But the Lord is there with you. Even if you don't understand, you can say, Sister, how come? is the is the consequence of my sin i did not do anything to get there where i am now yes maybe it's just it's happening in your life whatever is happening but verse 14 of psalm 94 the lord will not forsake his people he will not abandon his heritage for justice we return to the righteous and all the upright in heart will follow it. If you are in this time of your life that you don't understand what is happening and you say, I didn't do anything to get here. Trust in the Lord. Again, the prophet Isaiah, the prophet of faithfulness. Trust in the Lord because the Lord will not forsake his people. The Lord will not forsake his loved one. He will not abandon his heritage. For justice, you return to the righteous. Just keep praying. Just keep in this heart united with the Lord because justice will return to the righteous and all the upright in heart will follow it. All the upright in heart will follow it. The Lord was with, what was with Israel even when they were wrong. The Lord never left Israel. The Lord never left his chosen people behind. Even when they worship false god, 
gods. Even when they did all those wrong things, the Lord was always there. It is the same to us. Maybe we are living by the consequences of our freedom or things happen that we don't understand and we and, and we blame God for all those things. But no, the Lord is there always with us. doesn't matter the situation that we are in and He wants to be the one who comes and saves us and we need to trust Him. And in the light of this meditation, the Gospel of today The Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 11, verses 25 to 27 says, At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and their understanding and revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, And no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to the infants. This understanding that The consequence that we live by the consequences what we do and doesn't matter what happened to our lives we can always come back to the Lord is this secret that is hidden to the wise and understanding and it is revealed only to, to, to children only to infants to those who have a heart of infant the Lord is not talking about about the childish life But the Lord here is talking about this heart of a child that trusts Him. A child trusts his father, his mother. Doesn't matter the concept, doesn't matter what happens. The child just trusts. And many times the child knows that was their fault. They did something wrong. But they believe in the love that, that he or she receives from their parents and that's why they trust and they can come back right after see when a child does something breaks something they will forget and they will come back very soon just like nothing happened and they trust again and that's what that's the heart that we need to have this trusting heart heart we need to trust the lord and that's the secret that is hidden to the wise and understanding everything that wise and understanding in this sense knows is a complicated life a life that we live by calculating all the time if i do this i would get that no the lord is telling us yes you your life has a consequence your deeds has consequences and everything that you do will bring consequences yes but Do not forget that I am He for you. Don't forget that I am God. And all those things have been hidden from the wise and understanding and being revealed to infants, to the people that have this heart, that trust their father like a child. And that's the secret that Jesus brought to us. Jesus, the perfect son, brought this secret to us telling that our Father loves us and is there for us. doesn't matter what we do and that He will help us to fix all those things. He will be there for us to help us to go all to, to help us to go through those hard times, the very hard times. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal. The Son revealed the Father for us. The Son revealed the Father to us, to our souls, to our hearts. And that's why we need to keep this trust in the Lord. So I invite you today to have this word of contemplation after reading, meditating, and praying with the Word of God, 
What is the word of meditation that you have today? Just one word, one seed that you will keep in the barn of your heart. What is the seed? What will be the seed today? Maybe it could be, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to infants. Or Psalm 94, the Lord will not forsake his people. He will not abandon his, inherit his heritage. He will not abandon his heritage. For justice will return to the righteous and all the upright in heart will follow it. The certainty that the Lord is with us. And today, July 15th, is the feast day of Saint Bonaventure. Saint Bonaventure is very is well known for many, but not that well known for others. So Saint Bonaventure today, July 15th. Saint Bonaventure in Italian San Bonaventura, origin with the original name Giovanni di Fidanza, was born in twelve fifteen and died on July fifteenth, twelve seventy four in Lyon. He was canonized in April fourteen, fourteen eighty two, and his feast day is today, July fifteenth. So Saint Bonaventure was a minister general general of the Franciscan order and Cardinal Bishop of Albano. He wrote several works on the spiritual life and recodified the constitution of his order. He was declared a doctor of the church in 1587. So Saint Bonaventure is a doctor, a teacher in the church, of the church. He was a son of Giovanni of Fidanza, a physician, and Maria of Ritella. He felt ill while a boy, and according to his own words, he was saved from death by the intercession of St. Francis of Assisi. So as a little boy, he got ill, and he says by his own words that he was healed. He was saved from death. He was saved from death by the intercession of St. Francis of Assisi. And later in his life, he becomes a Franciscan. What an amazing story. So entering the University of Paris in 1237, he received the Master of Arts, and right after, he joined the Franciscans, Franciscan order and received the name of Bonaventure. So Bonaventure was particularly noted noted in his days as a man with a rare ability to reconcile diverse traditions in theology and philosophy. Modern scholars consider him to have been one of the foremost men of his age and an intrepid defend defender of human and divine truth and an outstanding exponent of mystical and Christian wisdom. Saint Bonaventure, his life, I, I really recommend you to read, to read the life of Saint Bonaventure. It's an amazing life, and I just try to smash things together here, do not take much time, but he is an amazing, amazing theologian, and he had this ability to reconcile different traditions that was fighting on his time, and he is this great doctor of the church they really encourage you to read and to end our morning together i would like to leave you with with the patriarchy reading for the office the office of the readings of this morning that talks by saint bonaventure is his writings saint bonaventure's writings the title is mystical wisdom is revealed by the holy spirit and St. Bonaventure says, Christ is both the way and the door. Christ is the staircase and the vehicle, led like the throne of mercy over the Ark of the Covenant, and the mystery hidden from the ages. A man should turn his full attention to this throne of mercy 
and should gaze at him hanging on the cross full of faith hope and charity devoted full of wonder and joy marked by gratitude and open to praise and jubilation then such a man will make with christ a pasch that is a passing over for this passover to be perfect we must suspend all the operations of the mind and we must transform the peak of our affections direct di directing them to god alone if you ask such thing if you if you ask how such things can occur seek the answer in god's grace not in doctrine in the longing of the will not in the understanding in the sight of prayer not in search seek the bridegroom not the teacher god and not man darkness not daylight and look not to the light but rather to the raging fire that carries the soul to god with intense fervor and glowing love let us die then and enter into the darkness silencing our anxieties our passions and all the fantasies of our imagination so such beautiful words from saint bonaventure if you want to find answers for your life seek god's grace not doctrine seek god's grace for the answers not doctrine in the longing of the will not in the understanding the longing of your will not understanding in the sight of prayer not in research seek the bridegroom not the teacher seek god seek god and not men so saint bonaventure today is giving that a path to follow giving that this trying to teach us this understanding that does not come by doctrine but by faith and by grace may the lord bless us today with this heart of a child of this infant heart that look for his grace and that is aware that everything that we do will bear consequences but we know that the lord is with us and that he's our savior and that he's always there to save us Amen.